and he broke my spoon. Morning everybody. Today there is no real plan of what I'm doing. Um, it's sort of just one of those days there's a few odd jobs to do, a bit of work. So I'm sort of just gonna be making up as I go along. Um, but as usual, I'm not gonna muck around, we're just gonna get straight into it. First job I'm doing is I've got to service the ute. So I'm just doing an oil and fuel filter change on it. Drop the oil as well, obviously. And um, yeah, I'll give it a graze and just general check over, make sure she's all ready to, uh, well, ready for nothing, but just <laughs> surface, I suppose. Um, yeah, so that'll be the first job. So I'll quickly smash that out and then um, wait for dad to get down here. And I think we've got a few odd jobs we want to do today. Um, might get the combine in and have a look at that. Um, yeah, so jump straight into it. Righty, hey, just started servicing the ute. First thing I've done is I just pulled the effort around and give it a clean. I uh, just thought I'd speak about this quickly. <clears throat> One thing that a lot of people um, forget to check is this little bowl um, on this style 79 series. The air filter has a secondary bowl at the bottom which catches uh, larger bits of dirt, leaf, bugs, and debris. And a lot of people forget to check them. Um, Pretty important that you do because it will fill up eventually and then the air filter will just suck and crap into it. So that's how much stuff's in my one. See a lot of bugs and a bit of dirt. A lot of bees and wasps by the look of it. So yeah, when you're servicing your land cruiser or you have that sort of air filter, make sure you're checking that this thing isn't full up and uh, that if it is, you're chucking it all out. So we'll crack on. Rightio, that's the service done on the ute. So, as I said, just changed the oil filter and the fuel filters. Gave it a grease, a bit of a checkover. Um, yeah, looks pretty good at the moment. Nothing really 
stands out to me that needs to be done. I do need to put a new set of shockers on the back, but that, um, that can wait for a little bit still. A couple of little jobs I'd like to do to it. They're not really major. Um, hope to bring out a couple of different videos soon um, to get me ass in the gear and actually do them. Um, I think they might be pretty interesting to any Land Cruiser owners out there who uh, might be interested in these sort of mods or modifications. Yeah, so this one's done. Move on to the next job now. Alright, so next job we're doing, I was just talking to Dad before, he was just out checking the sheep and uh, he wants to chuck some, chuck a bale of hay out to him and he also wants to feed a bit of grain out. We don't, you know, you probably have seen it maybe in the background, the old feed out cart. We don't use it all that much, um, but yeah, when we want to feed grain out, this is what we use. So I've just got it on the back of the ute here. So for those, most people will probably know what this is all about, for those who don't, Basically what it is, a little trailer, you fill this up with grain and down the bottom, a bit of hay and rubbish in the way, down the bottom there's a little chute and you pull the rope and that opens it up and the grain flows out and you drive along while you're doing it and the sheep or cattle or whatever you're feeding will run up and they have a chew. So we'll fill this up with a bit of grain and we'll go out the back and we'll feed the, uh, I can't remember if we said it was the lambs or the ewes. Doesn't matter, we'll, uh, we'll sort it out when we get there. All right, um, yeah, we're just back to the trailer up to the little auger here at the uh, field bin and we're gonna fill it up with some grain. Um, as I was saying before, we're going out to feed the sheep, we're gonna feed the ewes. Uh, the dad wants to give a more in-depth explanation as to why we're doing it. So, yeah, he's in. Hello, viewers. Won't be too in-depth, but we're just gonna feed the ewes that have been joined up to the Dooney rams because uh, they're a little bit light on for feed out there at the minute. Not They've got enough green pick to keep them going, but I just want to give them a bit extra grain. This is what's in this old bin's a bit of uh, self-sown wheat we scavenged off them paddocks a couple of years ago. And um, we're going to drizzle a little bit of that out onto the ground for them so it helps build them up a little bit while there's not much green pick hopefully we'll get a bit of rain and it might freshen things up a little bit so i thought we've got plenty of grain there's wheat in this one we've got barley in the bigger one and um, feed them up on a bit of grain and save the hay for uh, later on down the track when it gets a bit tougher going and they're more in lamb so and then we're going to feed the Lambs we weaned off those ewes, we're going to feed them a bale of hay because they've got a proper feeder out in the paddock and they can just come and help themselves to the wheat that I put in there a couple of weeks ago. Um, keep them going. So that's what we're up to today. <laughs>
love just coming out with the feed out cart to the paddock with the lambs and the uh, weathers. Um, so dad is going to chuck a um, bale hay in there. Um, and this is the paddock where he was talking about. There's that little feeder box. I don't know if he's going to be able to see it. It's out under that tree. You'll see a few sheep hanging around it, that silver thing. So basically we fill that up with grain and then we, there's an adjustment on the bottom that allows like a certain amount of grain out and the sheep can come up and just peck away at it whenever they want. So we don't need to feed them any grain. So then we'll go out to those other ones we were talking about and we'll feed them, but we'll chuck a bale of hay out to these ones first. I think that's just going to cut the strings off and just sort of shake it around to spread it out a bit. We do have a feed out thing for them, but that just prefers to shake it about with the front and loader, which I don't agree with, but um, yeah. His tractor, he can do what he wants. So I wait for Dad to come out here with the bale of hay, and then we'll shoot out and drop this grain off those other sheep. Well, while Dad's feeding out that hay, I'll just walk over to the feed, the bin over here I was talking about, show you that. Alright, so here it is here. Um, lid on the top, opens up. It's got a latch here. up here and you just fill it up with grain so this is the same stuff as what we're going to feed out to those sheep out there and then there's an adjustment just here so that you can open up depending on how much grain you want to be feeding your sheep and then you see there the grain sort of comes out down here and the sheep sort of lick that up I guess with their tongues to get it out but here's, this is what actually like adjusts how much will flow out and the sheep will just sort of get it out there. And it stops a lot of wastage, I think, is the point of it. So they don't waste too much grain.
right, so how much do you reckon that is? That's, what's that, like a maybe a third? Uh, how much do you think we fed out? Maybe a third of this? Uh, yeah. So we fed out about a third of the grain cart, the uh, feed out cart to the sheep. They're just up there following it down to where we've stopped here. So we'll cover this up with the tarp and we'll take it back up to the shed and then when they need to be fed again, we can just use what's left in here. So uh, yeah, that's done. All right, so we just brought the, got the combine out, we cleaned all the crap off at the first. Um, we're gonna sort of just do our checks out, checks on it, um, grease it and put some oil on the chains probably. We're gonna have a look at some of the hoses and the boots that underneath the box that have sort of come adrift and they're not really catching the grain as it falls out. Um, but yeah, I'll get Dad to explain a bit about that. So I'll get him in a sec. All right, we're just sort of half under here under the combine. Dad's just gonna talk about these pipes and um we were talking the other well, last month i think it was about doing a little bit of work to it maybe next year well not a little bit quite a bit of work to it um to sort of get it in a bit better shape and maybe change up the way it's sort of configured at the moment um i'll let dad tell you though because yeah he knows more about it than i do yeah good eye viewers back here again um yeah as cam said we're working on the old combine she's a few year old now and all these boots up the top and let the grain and fertilizer box. They're worn, the little clips that hold them there, they're worn out on some of them. So we're just looking at trying to make it a bit more presentable so the grain doesn't spill everywhere for this season, uh, for the little bit that we've got to do. And um, in the future, we might try and look at lifting the box up, I don't know, 12 inches, 18 inches or so, to give it a bit extra height. Then we can stagger the sewing tines, put one up the front, leave one in the middle, and stagger them back so they're sewing, instead of having these cultivating tines here, we have, have a sewing tine and that'll give us a bit more trash clearance so if we run into trouble like we might do this year with grass and rubbish out the back this thing should be able to go through it a fair bit easier um, that's a long-term plan that I've always had but seeing Cam's a bit interested now we might be able to do that but anyway we're just going to try and fix up these sewing boots and um, give it a bit of a grease and clean up and ready for when we want to sew this triticale later on this month maybe or early next so that's what's happening all right so i just finished greasing the combine i oiled the chains as well um didn't be on any of that if you want to see what, what goes on there and what i do i'll put a card up from when i did it last year it's pretty straightforward not much really to it so yeah, I'm gonna put this guard on. We've sort of had we've had it laying around in the shed for ages, and Dad forgot where it actually went on the combine. We thought it went down there on that chain beside the wheel and the guard there, but it turns out it goes on the chain and the drive gears on the side of the gearbox there. So we'll mount that back up so it's on there and not floating around. And then um, yeah, Dad's under there just tying up some of those boots, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Though. All right, I just got this guard back on looks a little bit nicer with it on not looking at those chains so that'll be a little bit better maybe and then dad's just tying up the boots there with a bit of tie wire just to hold them in place a bit easier. so they won't fall out now hopefully while we're driving along And it'll be a little bit better than what it was before. So we'll see how it goes though. Rightio, Dad finished up tying all these uh, the pipes up. We chucked a couple of new ones on that were broken as well. So it looks a bit better. And we should get a bit more grain into the ground properly from the tines. Anyway, there was a, a loose one of these tines. And anyway, I went to tighten it up. <laughs> Ended up snapping a bolt. So we started drilling it out. And uh, yeah, we'll try and drill that bolt out and 
see whether we can get a new one in there. We did have a spare one of these, but look like the same thing happened to Dad a few years ago when he's obviously tightened it up or undone it, another bolt was broken. So we're just gonna have to try and get this one out and get it back mounted. We drilled a, I drilled a hole through it, tried with an easy air without heating it up or anything, it's pretty solid, I don't want to break the um, easy out, so we're going to heat that up and hopefully that will sort of help it come loose and we should be able to get it out hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'll come back to you with how we go. Alright, we managed to uh, get that bolt out, we ended up just drilling a bunch of holes through it. We ran a couple of different um, a couple of different size taps down through the thread. Uh, she's a little bit manky at the bottom, but she should be alright for what we're doing. No. I don't know if we've got another bolt or not. This is the other bolt that come out the other side, but we'll, yeah, we'll just see how we go. Uh, I think the... Bottom part of the yeah, it looks alright. Oh, yeah, down the bottom of that. It's not real flash, but I don't think it's going to matter. Well, the hole's down there. It's better to... I don't even think that bolt all the way went all the way down anyway. Alright, well, we've sorted that out. We'll see whether or not we've got a bolt. Alright, so we just got this time mounted back on. Um, we found a brand new bolt that fitted. So that's all good and it's all set up now. That's tight. <laughs> Yeah, so all that just for me trying to tighten that up. So hopefully we don't have any more dramas. It was the only one that was loose. So that should be all good now. So this is pretty much ready to go. There's a little welding job that just needs to be done on the back um, like platform where you stand. It's just like cracking a couple of welds. Um, don't know if we'll maybe do that tomorrow. See so yeah, how we go. Um, yeah, so combine is pretty much ready to go. And yeah, as I said, I think I said about that. He chucked a couple of new pipes on and he's got all those boots sort of uh, rigged up so they won't be too bad this year and then maybe next year we'll think about replacing them all and doing some bit extra work to it all right just sort of wrapping up for the day i just grabbed mum for a minute just going to talk about the cattle seeing if she's the master of the cattle and uh yeah they're sort of they're carving at the moment so we'll just have a chat about that and they've got a stray calf i guess here so i'll give you over to mum Last time we did an update, I think we were talking about Ricky Baker, the little orphaned calf from last year. She's out in the paddock now with the cows and calves, living the life of a normal cow instead of a pet. But this little one here, we're into calving now, and this little one here was a twin. Um, and it, its mother couldn't cope with two, it was just too confusing for her. So, um, I'm raising this little one. Uh, we're probably about three weeks into our carving and this is the second set of twins. So um, 
I hope there's no more. <laughs> Twins are hard work. Um, the first set was actually quite welcome because the day before that, one of the cows had a stillborn calf, uh, which was really upsetting. So the next day there was a set of twins and again the mother couldn't deal with the two of them so I managed to foster it onto the cow that um, lost her calf and she was a happy girl because she had the baby so that was great um, so yeah we're just sort of three weeks in and we've probably got about 20 more yet to carve um, and yeah they're nice little calves and uh, hopefully it all goes well and we have no more dramas we've got um, Wieners out in the paddock that are approaching 12 months old. Some would be just 12 months old and the others would be a bit um, younger than that. And I'm prepping them for sale sort of mid-year. Um, they look pretty good at the moment. So hopefully um, I can sort of keep, you know, keep them poking along and, and looking good. And uh, the heifers that we AI'd um, last year, they're due to carve probably in about two or three weeks, I think. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see what those um, heifers have. Um, they should be nice little calves, I, I would think. Um, and then the process starts again. So um, yeah, that's probably all I can tell you at the moment. But yeah, hopefully it all continues to go well. So those AI ones, that are about to carve they're the ones we that we done last year so that's the ones we videoed i'll put a card up of it above above it um <clears throat> and will we cut ai and more this year yeah so what ones are we going to do of them what we'll ones do you know the same ones we ai we will yeah. ai again yeah and possibly i might keep some new heifers out of the wieners yeah and ai whatever i keep out of that lot so, yeah okay cool yeah and what are you going to do with this one? Well, this one I have to raise until she's finished um, drinking milk and stuff, and then she can go out in the paddock with the cows and calves. Um, but she's only uh, three days old, so she's a fair way off being weaned yet. And um, she's pretty cute, and she's waiting for her dinner. So, uh. yeah, <laughs> she thinks I'm going to feed her. All right, then. So there's an update of what's going on with the cattle. Um, yeah, we'll probably... <laughs> Uh, talk a little bit more about when we do some more AI or when a few more are carved and all that sort of rubbish. So we'll uh, yeah finish it up there. All right, so done and dusted for the day. So that was just a bit of a random day with a bunch of random jobs. Got a, quite a bit done. Um, probably wasted a bit of time fixing that snapped bolt on the combine, but that's what you get dealing with old rusty stuff. Things are going to break and takes a bit of time to fix them. So good to get the Ute service. Coal mine's pretty well done. Just as I said, there's a little welding job that we uh, we'll see if we do it or not. Hopefully we do. Um, yeah, you got the, cat, uh, the sheep fed and they're all good now. And yeah, throughout the day, mum, dad <coughs> been out, looked at the sheep, and mum's looked at the cows as she does every day. So and had a little bit of an update on the cattle there. So that is pretty much it for the end for this video. Um, yeah, I ain't got much more to say than that. So. Thanks all for watching as usual, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, right.